Alright, what's going on everyone, and welcome to the series in which I introduce you to all of the most powerful competitive decks in the modern format. The goal here isn't to give exact deck lists as those change constantly, but rather to give brief overviews of how the decks work so you can be prepared if you're new to the format. And today we're talking about Eldrazi Tron, not to be confused with Mono Green Tron, these are very different decks. We've already covered Mono Green Tron, you can find it in the playlist for the series if you haven't watched it already. But Eldrazi Tron starts with the Holy Trinity of Eldrazi, that being Matter Reshaper, Thought Not Seer, and Reality Smasher. Chances are if you're looking at a competitive Eldrazi deck list, it's going to have these three creatures. The first is a 3 mana 3-2 three that essentially replaces itself when it dies. You reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent that costs 3 or less, it goes right on the battlefield. And if it's not, you still draw it. So, replaces itself with a new card one way or another. Thought Not Seer is a 4 mana 4-4 four, four that rips a card out of the opponent's hand when you play it. And then they'll get to draw a new one when it dies. And then Reality Smasher is just a 5 mana 5-5 five, five with Trample and Haste that forces the opponent to discard if they target it. So these are very mid-rangey, right? They're good at 2 for one people, or in the case of the Seer controlling the opponent's hand, but are these really that good? I mean, Reality Smasher is basically a glorified charging Monstrosaur. I mean, it's better, but you know, it's are, are these really modern playable? This doesn't seem great. Well, the trick is that the deck plays Eldrazi Temple. It's a land that doesn't enter tap, notably, and it taps for 2 mana when casting Eldrazi. And this effectively lowers the cost of these Eldrazi by 1, sort of, by allowing you to cast them a turn early, right? Matter Shaper can come down on turn 2, Thought Not Seer on turn 3, Reality Smasher on turn 4, and suddenly these are much better. A, a turn 3, 4-4 four, four that rips a card out, a turn 4, 5-5 five, five, Haste Trampler, suddenly they're a lot better. And note that Eldrazi Temple is is not legendary. So if you happen to draw two of them, it gets crazy. You can play a turn two Thought Not Seer, turn three Reality Smasher, and that's pretty devastating. That's the nut draw. It gets kind of crazy if you get two Eldrazi Temples in your opening hand. So with Eldrazi Temple, the deck is really aggressive. It's, it's kind of an aggro deck, it goes super fast. So that's the Eldrazi half of the deck. But where does Tron come into play? Well, because Eldrazi are colorless, note that these mana symbols, they're just colorless mana. You have to use colorless mana to cast them. Can't use green sources to pay for the colorless symbol but since the deck is colorless there's no reason to play colored mana and if you aren't going to play colors then why not run Tron? So Tron is a set of three lands that if you control all three they tap for extra mana a seven total so if you get all three of these in play seven mana with three lands so seven mana on turn three potentially and to help assemble tron the deck plays expedition map as well this is an artifact that can be sacrificed to search for a land note that it doesn't say basic so this can tutor up missing pieces of tron or eldrazi temple to help accelerate mana production can also search up utility lands we'll talk about that later but basically expedition map helps your deck more consistently produce more mana than it should so what are we looking to cast with all the mana and the answer is Eldrazi Titans usually Emrakul or Ulamog as well as Endbringer. The Titans speak for themselves you can pause and read them if you want but basically they're giant insanely big beat sticks that you know they're pretty devastating and with Tron and Eldrazi Temple it's very easy to cast these. Endbringer is much less impressive by comparison but it's often played because it's a little bit easier to cast it only costs six so it's it's much more reliable to, to cast early it can kill small creatures it can lock down bigger ones and it can draw cards and still a pretty big creature that can come down on turn like four or five some games so the deck is basically a fast aggressive creature based deck with a massive stompy top end right wrong it's a prison deck you see, in addition to all this Eldrazi nonsense, the deck also plays Chalice of the Void and Karn the Great Creator. The first cost double X, gets X charge counters, and then counters any spell with the mana value equal to the charge counter. So basically, if you pay 2 for it, it gets 
one charge counter, and then anything that costs one gets countered, which is basically like 90% of modern. Okay, that might be an exaggeration, but it's like 70% of modern. <laughs> you know, you, you put this on one charge counter for two mana, and it like just locks down. No Death Shadow, no Ragavans, no Dragon Rage Channeler, no, 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 no Lightning Bolts, no Path to Exile, no, no Fatal Pushes, just all the cards. No, no, no to all of them. Just basically turn off like a very significant portion of all of modern. And also since this deck can produce so much mana with Tron, it can put, you know, three to five counters on this or whatever if you need it to lock out a specific card. If you know your opponent is built around a specific combo piece, it's not too hard to just get Chalice on that number and lock that card out of the game. Karn, on the other hand, can minus to find an artifact from exile out your sideboard really and put it into your hand and the sideboard is filled with lockdown cards like ensnaring bridge trinisphere torpor orb um the first shuts down stompy decks or aggro decks if you're low on cards trinisphere kills storm decks or any deck looking to cast free spells the orb shuts down decks relying on etb triggers and there's plenty more as well engineered explosives to wipe the board sorcerer spyglass to turn off an activated ability graph digger's cage for graveyard decks the list goes on the entire sideboard or like i think 12 or 13 cards out of 15 are single 10 lockdown cards so that Karn can get whatever card you need for whatever deck you're playing against and just shut it down. It even plays liquid metal coating. So Karn says your opponent can't activate artifacts and the coating turns things into artifacts so you can just grab a coating and just turn off anything you want. So you see with Chalice of the Void and Karn it's actually a prison deck. And bridging the gap between these two strategies are things like Ugin and Walking Ballista. Uh, not the common Ugin that you typically see. This one, um, first it makes colorless cards cost less so that's going to make it easier to cast your Eldrazi Titans and whatnot, but he can also minus to blow things up, so he's a ramp and a, a controlling planeswalker that blows things up. Also makes tokens, which is relevant, but mostly you want to be able to cast Emrakul and Ulamog and also blow up stuff that's pressuring you and then walking ballista is an important mana sink for tron decks first you can dump all your mana into it when you cast it and that's important when you're producing you know 7 10 15 mana with tron so when you have just all this mana ballista comes in it's huge and then every turn you can pay for well not every turn you can pay for as many times as you want but you can constantly pay for to add a counter so all that excess mana doesn't go to waste once you have, you know, 10 plus mana, you have something to do with it with Walking Ballista. And then the Ballista can remove counters to ping stuff and anything notably. So this is a way to just kill the opponent sometimes. But it allows you to lock the opponent out of the game sometimes by just insta-killing stuff that enters the battlefield. They play something, you ping it off, and then you just put the counters back on the Ballista. That's the idea. There's also All is Dust, which is kind of fun. It forces everyone to sacrifice all permanents they control that are one or more colors. Colors. And if you haven't noticed, we have no colors. This deck is devoid of colors. So this is a one-sided board sweeper. Blows up your opponent's entire board. Doesn't touch yours at all. So that's fun. And speaking of not having colors, because the deck literally does not need to produce colored mana, it can play all kinds of sweet colorless utility lands. Like I mentioned earlier, things like Blast Zone, Scavenger Grounds, and Seagate Wreckage. The first is a sort of board sweeper. Can build up counters and then blow stuff up. The second hates out graveyards and the wreckage is just card draw. Normally lands like these are kind of a liability because it's a drawback not being able to produce colored mana, right? If you're playing a two or three color deck, colorless lands can sometimes make your mana awkward. So you get these cool abilities, but the drawback is they produce colorless mana and that can be a problem. But with this deck, that's not a drawback at all. So you just get free abilities on your lands and they can be tutored up with expedition maps. So while you would prefer to find a Tron piece with a map, if you're playing against a graveyard deck, you can just go grab scavenger grounds and, and wipe out the graveyard. So that's very useful. And that's the general idea of Eldrazi Tron. It's much different than Mono Green Tron, which is basically a combo deck that is 100% focused 
on assembling Tron as soon as possible and can fall apart if it can't find it. Eldrazi Tron is, is sort of more traditional in that it loves to assemble Tron but it's not racing towards it. It can grind out value with low end Eldrazi, it can lock you out of the game and it can ramp into big massive scary threats. It's not as aggressive as aggro decks, it's not as efficient at ramping like stompy decks and it's not as good as locking players down like all in prison decks but it's capable of doing all three of those things it's sort of like a jack of all trades deck i think the flavor text of reality smasher sums it up nicely as easy to stop as it is to comprehend that's how drazi tron where does it sit in the metagame is it an aggro deck is it a stompy deck is it a lockdown deck is it a control deck is it a combo deck and the answer is yes kind of it's complicated it's sort of those things it's yes the answer is yes or no not really but kind of so yeah that is eldrazi tron so be sure to check the description of this video to find links to metagame tracking websites if you want to see the most up-to-date deck list or just a bunch of different deck lists so you can see how different people build their deck you can find links below and if you like this video i will also leave a link to a playlist filled with these videos i have an entire playlist dedicated to these intro to modern videos so you can check that out if you want to see more but in the meantime thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one